So I haven't done anything interesting to my Caprice except for put wheels on it in about two years. I think I tinned the windows like three years ago. Since I've built it, I just put gas in it, charge the batteries occasionally, and I drive it. That's about it. So I think it's finally time to take some things off the list of stuff that I wanted to do to it. I have tucked bumpers on a Caprice before. I've pushed bumpers in on multiple vehicles that are from the 80s. I will explain how to do that. If you are familiar, if you own a Caprice or you're familiar with Caprices and other cars from the 80s, the bumpers stick way out. I will add a picture of this car to the screen to show how far out. It's a lot. The... As it is now, the bumper is about an inch in past the grill. From the factory, there is about three or four inches of bumper sticking out. Like, or not even bumper sticking out. Three or four inches of gap between this and the bumper. You could put, I don't know. It's ridiculous. Like... These cars, part of their safety restraint stuff is the bumpers have a gas strut built into the back of them. And it acts as a shock absorber. So whenever you hit something, their idea was it's was supposed to push the bumper in and then come back out. Or when it went in, it was supposed to absorb the impact. So I will explain how I go about pushing the bumper closer to the body. And in this video, I'll be showing you how I go about eliminating, as you can see here, this massive gap. And I like to make it to where this is even with this. And this portion here is even with this. If you have really nice chrome bumpers, don't do this unless you want to re-chrome them. I don't care about rust and finishes on this car because I pulled it out of the woods, sat in the woods for like 15 years. I like the way it looks. I want it to be ratty, so most likely when I get done with this, I'm just going to leave the weld ground down. Let it look nice, but I'm just going to let it rust because I think it'll add to the car. But, stick around and uh, see if we can make this thing a little bit cooler. And I can feel like I don't neglect this project for my other projects like I actually do. So the first thing you want to do, if your car is in good shape, like mine, cover up the body as much as possible. Because weld splatter ruins paint jobs and it really, really ruins windshields. And then... You get your car all covered up and nothing can get harmed. You go through and remove the bumper and delicately take your time. There's a whole bunch of bolts holding this stuff on. And carefully remove all of it to where you can get to the bolts. You can see there's one there and there's one there. As you can see, I took, I took my time just now. Even though I'm not reusing that stuff, I took my time to make sure that I didn't break it. Then, go to the other side, repeat the process, very carefully remove the trim from that side. Hold on, I gotta get my trim removal tool. After you carefully remove that, what I like to do is set the bumper back on. That way, you can ensure that whatever you're doing isn't going to be off. And you don't want to cut the bumper up off the car and get it all nicely ground down and put it back on the car and find out that it's still wider than the outside of the body or not where you wanted it to sit. So... 
hang it back on the car, which removing them isn't too bad. Let me clean this floor up so I can lay down on it. As you can see from the factory, there is four bolts, light socket, four bolts, and a light socket. Pull them four bolts off and mumbrick pops off. These here, this thing, are the struts that I was speaking about. All I do, remove the four bolts, both sides take the mumber off, drill a small hole, see that hole right there. These are charged, be careful with them because most of the time that charge is pretty much gone. This car is 35 years old or whatever it is. So mine didn't really have a charge, mine just had yeah, oil in them. No actual gas charge. So you drill a hole in it, you drain them out. What you get as much of that oil out of there as you can. Take a it doesn't even have to be a heavy hammer. Just a hammer. Tap it in. Make sure you pay attention to both sides. Tap them in to where they're even. Hang your bumper back up on there. Check it over. Make sure it is where you want it to be. Don't hit the bumper. The bumpers are thick. You might think it can handle it, but they can't handle it. I've tried to hit them with rubber mallets, and they bend pretty easily. It's 80s GM junk, so kind of to be expected. So once you get your bumper set up in there, if you feel like doing the portion I'm about to do now, it's really up to you. Again, I'm not telling you to do this. Don't ruin your chrome just because it looks cooler-ish, to me at least. It's not a product, but if you plan on painting the bumper, you plan on getting the bumper re-chromed anyway, now's the time. Because, I mean, yeah, you understand. Let me take the edge of the bumper and just say you want to go the furthest point on this corner it's about an inch and three quarter out so meaning I need to remove about an inch and three quarter out of here keep in mind if you plan on doing that you're gonna have to make two cuts if you push the bumper in because of this gap between here and here because if I just push this in inch and three quarter this is the bumper is going to be touching the body so what I'm going to do I got an inch and three quarter here and then take out almost exactly an inch of the end of the bumper take it out through here and move this in move this in at the same time these are welding blankets i recommend them even if it's on a car that you don't care about the paint at least for the glass because it's pretty terrible going on the road during the rain and you can just hear the windshield wipers going past grit it's not fun for anybody do this on the windshield and the headlights because again I could care less about the paint or the body but those two things I'd rather not replace headlights for these things are getting expensive parts for these cars these cars in general are getting expensive I paid 500 bucks for this thing and I spent an hour getting it running and I drove it out of the woods it's actually not bad it has one scrape in a door but it's not that deep like this car now which I have no idea why is like six grand all day long ridiculous makes absolutely no sense to me it's still a piece of crap like 
the prices nowadays are absolutely terrible. It's kind of hard to tell, but there's a laser level going there. Tried to put it into that body line to use as a reference point. But I think that'll work. As long as the two cuts match up, that's all that really matters. So the bumper has been trimmed and set back on and welded back on. I, when I was underneath of it, I noticed that the bumper can go up and the bumper can still go in a little bit. So I cut a little bit more off of the side towards the fender to hopefully push it in some more. There's a bracket under there that I didn't notice back in the like years ago whenever I pushed the bumper in that was actually stopping the bumper from going any further so I'm kind of thinking rather than trying to make that piece that goes between the bumper and the grill I might make the bumper almost touch the grill and then make a filler piece below the bumper like a newer vehicle has a lip I think that might be a better idea it's either that or I'm gonna look into the filler panel but as of right now the bumper doesn't look too bad that was kind of a ugly bugger weld on there but it doesn't really matter this is shaped oddly so the gap isn't the same all the way down I made it to where this is in just past this trim that way it's I mean you can kind of see it's just barely past this piece of trim which causes this to be out a little bit further but I think it looks pretty good I mean this compared to that huge huge difference that is a gigantic gap and this doesn't look too bad. So now I'm gonna go through, grind all this down. And like I said before, I think I'm just gonna leave it. Like, I don't really think it matters with this car. I think it'll look kind of cool, rusty, lighter. Maybe, maybe eventually if I can find this stuff, maybe I can put it back on or find something that looks similar to it. If not, who cares? It's a rat rod in a way. But here's that gap that I'm speaking about. As you can see, the I, feel, I believe this car has been in a maybe a couple accidents because this gap is a lot different from that gap. I'm going to try to adjust it out. And that bracket in there is the one that I was talking about. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to pull that off and see if I can tweak this thing around. 
fill the gap in. The only thing I'm concerned about with bringing this up to here is it's going to be so far off when it comes down to this portion. So I think unless I can find another caprice bumper to kind of graft in between here, which would be pretty cool. But like I said earlier, there's these things are getting hard to come by and people think they're worth a fortune. It's crazy. The market's crazy. Overall, it turned out pretty good. Factory-ish. Got a little bit of grinding to do right there. But other than that, I'm gonna call this side done. Besides the whole moving this around and whatnot. So I imagine that when I adjusted this a couple years ago, either I didn't get it adjusted right, which is very possible, or this bumper is just this tweak because I took an inch out of the other side and this is definitely not an inch. So I guess I'll be adjusting everything again. I already cut the cut it out of the other side. I can't go back. So I cut it out of this one and weld it up and Yeah, it's late. This pretty late last night till like I don't know it was like 11 30 I think I finally gave up one side but it didn't turn out too bad keep in mind like I said before I gotta make a filler piece or order a filler piece most likely I'll have to make one because I pushed the bumper in so far that I don't think the factory one would work anymore but it didn't turn out too bad Just in line with the body here. From factory, it's in probably eight inches, maybe more. These bumpers have a, a natural kick down on the end. I might actually purchase the plastic pieces here just because I mean, it's a low rider, so twisting and if I ever three wheel it or anything like that, that bumper would definitely touch the body if I push it in anymore. But I did push it in about, I don't know, quarter to a half an inch more this morning, but I'm happy with it. I mean, it's, it's worth doing if you decide to tackle this, like it cleans up the look of the car a lot especially if you plan on painting the bumpers. But like I said with mine, I'm just gonna let them rust because I mean, it'll match 
like the roof is nothing but rust. But yeah, that big gap kind of kills the look of it, but there's nothing I can do about it right now. Thanks for watching. Hopefully somebody will try to tackle this on their own after watching this, maybe. I don't know. But one of the up and coming videos, I believe I'll be tackling the rear bumper because it's just as ugly. This is pushed in again. The end of this bumper met the end of this pretty much like this edge was about here so however much that is has already been pushed in but the same issue this thing hangs way out there and looks goofy like now you can't even see the front bumper from over here yeah that's uh that's coming soon so make sure you stop back by and check to see if that's happened yet maybe don't forget to subscribe see you on the next one